they say that um, when the pain is great enough, we are willing to change and take that first step. So uh, I called a couple rehabs that were recommended to me. Uh, my mom was the only one that knew what was going on. My um, ex-husband had no idea about the pill, you know, like no idea. And my kids didn't, nobody knew. My mom, because of her marriage to my dad and recovery could zero in and see. But she knew that I, I had to take that journey and hit that bottom by myself. But she was there on the other side and said, you know, maybe it's like vacation, you know, no kids, no phone, no obligation, like, and people to love you. And it just shifted for just enough time for me to make those phone calls um, and not overthink it. And I am a classic overthinker. You know, I was a uh, very much a control freak, very much running on my own will, could not ask for help. Um, you know, these were my big flaws that that uh, drove me to my own end. And I would I would like plan chess moves six moves in advance and have plan A, B, C, D, and E as my backups. And I was fixated on outcomes and attached to things going my way because that's the only way I felt self safe and okay in the world. And you know that January thirtieth was kind of the the shattering moment where. Um, I was willing to be honest and get help. So I go to rehab. It's I get back into art therapy, you know, and and I shook so bad coming off what I would, had been on for 15 years that um, I got into you know finger painting literally on these on these big pieces of paper. It's all I could do, um, and I realized that I could express all this emotion out with paint. You know, I started squeezing paint onto the paper and just finger painting like a child and what I had always taught people that I worked with with art was that there's no right or wrong way to create art there's no judge in the sky to say this is good this is bad it's a form of expression and in a culture where everything is judged and criticized and you know this dance around what people think and putting that image and I was absolutely about protecting myself with this image. So for me to just finally experience that release and shift, um, because there, there's the therapy, there's this verbal world we live in, and there is so much benefit in that. Um, and I had a lot to say. Um, I, I went in with the illusion that, um, you know, I like therapy. I, I felt like I was much further along emotionally than I was. And, um, you know, I was not planning to make friends, connect with people, any of it. I was going to do my thing, come out, everything would be fine in my marriage and my family. I'd be cured. And what happened, and I'm looking at the time, what happened is uh, it didn't go that way. I realized if I would go back, I'd relapse because um, I couldn't live in that environment where I was not seen or I, I just couldn't. So I got up the courage. I left. I, um, you know, sped up. But addiction is a funny thing. It's like whack-a-mole. It's really a wiring of my mind. Um, so when I got control of the substance and um, got support in how to stay in today, I mean, truly live one day at a time while I'm going through complete chaos and insanity with this husband that could was losing face um, because I left. And that's all that mattered to him. And um, so the food, the food issues, the eating disorder, um, is, it's a mind altering, mood altering experience when you engage in any kind of, you know, binging, purging, restricting, you know, the, the I don't need to describe it. It's anyone experiencing any of that. Um, it was a feeling outside myself and I was still looking for those feelings outside myself. So I didn't have to feel the pain that spun off. I entered a brave I really didn't want to self-destruct anymore. I had these tastes of this peace and this freedom, just enough to keep me going. And I um, entered uh, inpatient treatment for the eating disorder in the summer of 2019. Came out a little bit stronger, a little more humble, um, and a, a little more willing to take ownership of this. And that enabled me to kind of look at this commercial building that's right next to my house that I rent and say, 
what if I, what if I risk? Um, and I was a part-time rowing coach, so I was going to balance the two. I can teach. That'll be steady income. So I signed the lease February 1st of 2020, and then COVID hit, and my kid with the lung issues, who was 21, had no safe space in Georgia, and his we needed to wait for the world to catch up with COVID. So we went into early lockdown on March 17th and all of a sudden I have this rent to pay. And, you know, but uh, my story is really about surrendering my control and trust to kind of universe, God, higher power, whatever, you know, it is to you. Um, you know, and I learned that a higher power can even be like connecting with other people and the energy that's created when I allow people in. Um, that's a power greater than me trying to achieve anything on my own. And uh, so, you know, I pivoted in COVID. I realized that I have an opportunity here to paint my heart out. And I started um, fusing together meditation. I started, if anyone's ever read The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, go read it. I had read it 20 years prior and learned about morning pages. And it's very different from journaling where you're documenting what happened. And um, like I go back over my journal and I read about things from years ago. But this was different. This was all about um, stream of consciousness, free flow, processing things. Um, I, have, I have it around here. So this is part of what I would experience. And I ended up playing around with covering those words. And sometimes it would often start with, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It's about keeping that pen moving for three full pages until something would catch. And those of us with children and, and significant others, you know, it's hard to put on paper in writing things you don't want people to reread. So I found this safe space in combining, you know, I got grounded with meditation. I got the words out with the journaling. And then I shifted immediately into the nonverbal expression, you know, just finger painting, just going into the paint. And this is kind of one of them, you know, the texture, the tactile, you can see some of the words coming, coming through over here, just allowing myself to express without any, without trying to create art that's marketable, that's pretty, that's people will buy, you know, there's so much safe art in the world. There's so many beautiful paintings but this was about me finding my voice and trusting that if I just show up to this canvas and allow myself to express whatever's churning through me onto canvas, then, you know, let go of perfect, let go of planning, let go of perfection, let go of control and just trust the process that, you know, and so now I have created over a hundred paintings in the last four months since I, or five months now, since I committed to full-time painting found my voice. This is part of my creative practice, this journaling, meditating, painting on top. I started, you know, really using these hand-painted papers, tearing them up and creating, uh, just going, fusing together like tissue paper. And but you can see, you know, these are pieces of the tree. Um, it's an easy way to gift people who want to try this a way to engage in creativity without a whole lot of experience. You know, finger paint, tear it up, put it on a canvas, layer some tissue paper on there. Mod Podge, Mod Podge was kind of what I was using to as glue. Um, and, you know, I realized that I can give this to other people. I can give them this tool and I can take it bigger on canvas. And I can, you know, this has been about owning the light inside me and not feeling guilty to shine not being inhibited to go big with my vision, go big with canvases, um, all of that stuff. So now, you know, through just trusting the universe, I met Dave in this program we were in together. I learned to kind of market and hone this story and message. And, you know, one of the big shifts I had in the pandemic was looking in the mirror one day and really kind of going down into what or limiting beliefs I still was hanging on to that were keeping me from making money, keeping me from chasing. And, uh, you know, there was kind of this giant shift in the process of, you know, all these modalities that are available to us to heal and learn and be inspired. And I started 
thinking of it as food for my soul and change the way I change the music I listen to just as an experiment. Like what if I changed music and t- you know, thought of that as food? What if I stopped watching, you know, the kind of crime who done it shows that can get really dark. What if I just stop watching and start, you know, kind of building, what if I cut out all the, the people who just want my time and want to drain me? Um, what if I was brave enough to say no and stop people pleasing and, foster this little nurtured space, like find my worth and say, wow, you're worth it. You know, and that's what I want to give to everybody because we were all gifted with, with these things that are unique to us that if we protect them and kind of, you know, there's just these little glowing embers and fan that flame. So they, they spark into that fire. And now, um, you know, I never thought I would be in a place where I could show up in front of camera in my overalls and um, not care anymore what people think of me. I'm sure there's going to be haters with my story, critics, but I don't have to care about that anymore. I'm sure my art is not for everybody, and I'm happy because there is art for everybody, Um, and I'm not trying to appeal to anybody anymore. It's about owning my story and and what I'm good at and what I can put in the world and realizing some days it's going to be these landscapes with bright light that comes out of it. Some days it's going to be you know, the more abstract, some days it's going to be working through, I don't know if you can see back here, some really dark stuff, but it's that process of not backing down, you know, staying engaged um, in all things I do now, showing up. Um, You want to be on a TV show, Jess? You know, hell no, (laughs) but I'm going to show up and I'm going to do it. And I've had letters and emails and DMs from people struggling, just either stressed or I'm in this active place and how do I take that first step? So, um, you know, I'm out there. Uh, My vision is shifting and changing. Um, My goal is to just speak out against everything I've experienced and and be an example or a leader, or if I impact one person or get them excited and charged up to kind of try using the creative process as as a tool not as an end product, but as this tool to um, express ourselves and, and find those, those dreams. You know, when, when you express, like, there's nuance of emotion in here that I don't have words. I don't think the English language has words to articulate what this is. I don't analyze it anymore. I don't, but it's a, it's a we mirror each other in human connection. We connect with others, we get vulnerable, and we connect dots to ourselves that I don't think ever would have happened. And this reflects back at me in a very similar way where I'm making connections um, by just not judging anymore and just getting curious. Curiosity. Children have that natural curiosity. And like for me to reignite that that child in me, I know it's cliche, but there's truth in it. To to be curiously driven, to be not attached to doing anything my way or um, not looking to people to fill any kind of void. Um, But how can I connect with them? And we can do these great things together in that energy. So that's kind of it. And I know we only have eight minutes and I was going to do a little store, you know, tour of the studio, but you know, maybe we do that another time or I I want to allow time for questions. Uh, Yeah. (coughs) Well, yes. Yeah. You always blow me away. Um, (laughs) Um, yeah, it's like an emotional roller coaster. Your story and, and unbelievable. Um, yeah, so we'll definitely do questions. Um, just want to add really quickly. Uh, yeah, so I've only known Jess for the last couple of months in in this program that we were doing online, which was amazing. So actually, if anyone wants to, not necessarily this program, but if anyone wants to um, get out there and ju- just like try a new program, dive in head first. Head first. You you. If, if you go in again with courage to anything that you want to try, like anything out of the comfort zone, go out there. I mean, when I get a text saying, Hey, do you want to sh- sign on to this um, be on TV bootcamp program? Like it, like Jess, it sounds insane to me. Like, well, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, but, but yeah, like my, my default, like Jess now is, is we say yes to everything, especially the things that scare you because I think the, the things that scare you, as long as you're lit up by them and you're excited by them, those are the things that will really take you towards dreams, take you towards growth, 
and an incredible thing. So um, one in the last two months with Jess, uh, the one pattern I've seen over and over again, is she is a, a fireball and all of these opportunities come up, like she says, and, and literally every day something new will come up and, and she's scared all the time, just like I am with doing this kind of thing, uh, being on video, like it's not comfortable for me by any means. And, and you just create a habit of pushing into it over and over and over again. And when you do that as a habit, your, your self growth and opportunities and open doors, just, it's unbelievable. Like the old, the old version of me, I often say to Jess, the old day versus new day. Same for Jess. Um, and everyone's stepping into these worlds. Like there, there's this pattern of constantly stepping into courage, which would have been so scary before. We were, like we're so used to just pulling back, closing up, and kind of sitting in our comfort zone, which uh, which is kind of a fake thing. I, I believe the comfort zone. So anyway, let's move on to questions because that story was unbelievable. One more thing to add because this is a really great example of doing something really afraid. I think. <laughs> Any of us that are feel like writing a book, you know, the anxiety around that. Um, I spoke somewhere, someone heard me. She was writing a collaborative book. They were at the publishing deadline and someone had dropped out. She wasn't going to replace him. She heard my story. She said, Jess, this is a long shot. I want you in the book. Can you write your story in a week? Um, write my whole chapter. And I did. And so now I have a book coming out in a few weeks. You know, one month ago, I was not a published author. Two weeks from now, I will be a published author. Forbes is going to feature the book. Forbes or Entrepreneur Magazine. Um, you know, it's on track to be an international bestseller as her past one was. So you, know, you never know. Everything we want is on the other side of fear. And it's, you know, that example, I think, is a hit home of don't overthink it, just do it. Um, yeah, so any questions? That's amazing. Yeah, fire away. Actually, I've got about four. <laughs> and I'm going to give them all to you now, Jess, and then I'll let you write them down and answer in the interest of time. First question was that you made reference to back in the darker days that your mom was your main supporter, the only person that was aware of what you're going through. And that's my first question is, is, was she the only support that you had, period? Or were there friends and other supports that either didn't understand or disappointed you and you had to walk away from that support and go within as opposed to um, relying on somebody else? So that's, that's sort of the first piece. Uh, although you've gone through um, many years of pain, your... Um, the outcome that you have right now on the more positive side is fairly fresh, right? It's not that long ago that you, you know, the fog dissipated for you, uh, in my view. So is there a person now that you lean on to or turn to um, and to support you and as a result of any fear that you might have? And I guess there's more than three, sorry. Um, and... Do you have any fear, because it's so fresh, do you have any fear of being able to sustain longer term your current attitude, for lack of better terms, or be able to sustain it long term? And, and, and if so, how did you achieve that part? And then finally, uh, I did have a Norman Rockwell upbringing myself, by the way, and, and got disappointed along the journey as well. But um, I, this may not be appropriate to say, but I just wanted to say that you know my story versus yours is i'll be stop i'm going to stop whining now about mine you know, obviously you've been through a lot and i'd like to congratulate you on getting out of the other side of that if that's appropriate great if it's not just yeah. file it accordingly yeah no that's great um i can answer this fairly quickly uh i was afraid to let anyone in i i cut ties with everybody i had zero friends um those last two to three years uh, I was trying to put all my focus on my kids and my family as my dad was getting sick. You know, I went to every chemo, all of that. And, um, there was no time really. And, uh, when I was out of it, which was a lot, I, I didn't want anyone to see that. So my mom was the only one and she kept quiet because, um, you know, she had been in recovery for people of you know, the addicts and knew to just, this was my journey. And, um, she just loved me through it. 
you know, as far as support now, I, I don't try to do anything alone anymore. And I am absolutely on a break from any kind of relationship intimately with a, with a guy. Um, I am realizing that there is so much power in showing up and being available to build a network. Like I do have a huge recovery community and I'm close, deeply close to um, my sponsor and probably three women that um, I don't need a lot of really deep and, and I, I trust them, know they have my back on anything. Um, and then, you know, I have people, I, I did do a program at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, working with children on the oncology floor and the woman I worked there, you know, I have people in pockets of different areas. Um, but this Beyond TV boot camp, you know, I thought was a scam. I thought it, I, you know, I came in with my judgments and my whatever, but I, within 10 minutes of the first pre-party, um, you know, they were talking, they nurture this environment of, of giving and sharing and, you know, come as you are, own your mess as your message. And I started, they encouraged us to just engage, get to know the network. And I, you know, I have probably met on Zoom with probably, I would say, 60 people now in the last two months to just say, hey, I do this, what do you, you know, and, and just the energy created when one creative mind meets another creative mind. I mean, Dave and I have this synergy too. It equals 10 times the energy. It's not rational. It's not logical. It just, and so um, that's where I'm finding the energy to sustain this. And I have no fear and no doubt that um, because I'm reaching out, because I am, uh, if I get tired, depressed, lonely, any of it, it's, it's moments now or hours now. And I reach out. I don't sit in it. Um, or I do something that scares me. I send out a pitch to the media and just in the process, it doesn't matter if they take it or not. It's the process of getting through that fear and like, Oh, I did it. I did it again. I showed up, you know, and just doing that, just even if it's one thing every day or one conversation with one of my support network, which is now massive, um, on social media, I, I, I lost my fear of posting my story and, I am, I have a very engaged following. It's not huge yet, but, um, you know, it's those connections between those people who are excited about what I'm doing, that just using all the fire, all the energy of community, um, you know, that, that propels me forward. And, uh, I, I don't have any fear of my abilities anymore because I don't even think they're my abilities. It's, it's this thing that's coming through me, um, that I'm putting in the world. Yeah. So, and thank you. Thank you very much. And, and, and uh, by the way, your mom sounds very cool. I expect you to tell her I said so. I will. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Uh, anyone else have questions? I know we're at 12.02, um, but yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll ask a question. Hey, Jess. First of all, thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, that is awesome. Um, I, I guess I'm kind of curious, if anything. Uh, what is the, what is the, the book that you're a part of, and also what is this Beyond TV bootcamp that you can share a little bit more on that? Yeah, absolutely. My book, and this is how fast it's happened. I have to read the title because it's she can do it, and so she did it, and so can you. Twenty inspirational women share their stories and steps of how they achieved rapid success. Um, I spoke at a best-selling book summit on Wednesday. Another like, you know. I love to write. I've always written, always wanted to write a book, but um, to be on, in this position now, it's like, wow. So um, yeah, that's coming out. I'm going to put the link on all my social media whenever it's available. Um, everything from the Kindle version is going to go straight to charity. Uh, I didn't do it for money at all. I did it to push through fear, show up and show myself I can do this. And I believe in, you know, kind of the story and it, it's true of me. Um, and where I am right now and where I've been in previous parts of my life. I just, the darkness consumed me over and over again. Um, and then what was the other question you had? The book? Oh, the Beyond TV. Yeah, Beyond TV. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So we can put a link out there or something or DM yeah. me and I'll find the direct link. It was $55 to take part of this five day workshop, but it was really 10 days cause they, they do over deliver. Um, they're, the content, every moment of everything they, they teach is 
unbelievable, but it's in the application of it. You know, there are steps to achieve everything and everything we do in life, but it's in, you know, trusting app, implementing it, that the magic happens. And it's in that network reaching out, like Dave reached out on the first day. Um, I did pay the, I think it was 97 to be part of the Zoom calls. And I think there were what, 500 people in the Zoom calls? Um, yeah, yeah, I feel like about tons of people in the Facebook group, maybe a thousand ish in the Facebook. But so, yeah, the, the amount of energy and connection in that Facebook group was incredible. And, and everyone's sharing their, their deepest stories essentially and, and then their dreams. But there's so many entrepreneurs in that group as well. Uh, so you, you're surrounded by this environment that's just incredibly uplifting and what, it, not, not only what is possible, but people are around you in the group saying, oh, I've just signed this book deal and this and that. And <laughs> you're like, okay, yeah, it is only one or two steps away to whatever you want to try and achieve. It, it's phenomenal. They take the mystery out of, of um, all the media and, and the media needs stories. Like we're doing them a favor by giving them content another mindset shift. You know, yeah. it was big. I didn't have any goals going into it. I didn't think I was prepared for anything bigger. I just tried it because someone recommended it. Um, someone I didn't even really know well. It just went on a whim. That open-mindedness yeah. to try. Five days, I can do it. 55 bucks, yeah. No. So, so you really had no reason. You were just, oh, someone told me about it, so, okay. I was in another mastermind with just artists in the fall and part of the, the branding and the talking about like growing your business was get going live on camera on Facebook and Instagram, like the algorithm and the engagement. And I had tremendous fear. I, I couldn't do it. Um, so that was kind of, that was the nudge that I needed to just, okay, I'll get, maybe there's something about getting comfortable on camera. Um, oh, okay. So that was all, I just needed that one little something to, to do it. And then the whole like world blew up, which is amazing to me. And, um, you know, my, my painting sales picked up, um, talk about energy and just manifesting things. I, I had my first five figure month last month, um, with painting sales, like the originals are selling off the easel and, uh, the print sales. Um, yeah, like and that's one of the examples of a frame print. Um, yeah, so it's it's not just mindset, it's monetarily, uh, it, it's rolling. That's awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, when you were sharing those things, like for a long time, like growing up, I never really thought about writing a book, but I started to, to hear more stories and reasons why people started writing books. It's more about um, you know, sharing stories and touching people's lives and helping people and having a, a great impact. So I'm like, oh, that's probably something I should do uh, at some point. So I, that's why I was curious about the, the media bootcamp. And because obviously there's so many different mediums to be able to get your message out there and to touch up people's lives nowadays. And so yeah, uh, that's very cool. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even if you were a passive listener, um, and just listened and listened to the Zoom calls or watched it Facebook Live uh, and didn't do any of it then, like it still plants that, it's like an, a window into a whole different arena that could plant a seed for empowerment and courage, but, you know, when the time is right for each individual. And I get nothing out of promoting it, neither does Dave. Like it just really did do amazing things, so. Yeah. Well, even if you did, I don't think there's any, it's anything wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know why people always have an issue, right? Like, if you believe in something, and even if you do get something, there's nothing wrong with knowing stuff that you believe. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. you know, there's too much of a stigma around stuff like that. It's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Were there any other questions just before we run out of time? All good. Hey Dave, actually I've got one. So this is James. I'm just James. tuning in kind of visually Hi. for the first James, time. I didn't know it was uh, the James. The James <laughs> I know. <laughs> the James you know, yeah. Yeah, right? we, yeah, yeah. welcome. Uh, we connected welcome. this week, really. Welcome. And I talked to Jess for just a second on Clubhouse, I guess. Um, so hey, I'm curious. I, I'm really inspired by your journey, Jess. It's amazing. And um, I'm a creative too that been so I know the pain of that, the 
inner desire to let that out. Yeah. But then how do you make a living and find fulfillment in the rest of the world? And where do you turn when you're often crushed by so many outside influences? And mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm curious about parenting. So you've got all of these children. Sounds like some of them are older. How do you manage this journey you're on now with being a parent? Yeah. Because kids take so much time. I know I feel guilty sometimes if I'm giving outwardly. I'm not, I, I, I guess I let myself take a backseat so often to their journeys. Mm -hmm. But you're on this amazing journey and I want to figure out how can I better manage my journey and be fulfilled that way and yet still feel like I'm being a great parent. Right. So I'll check out. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for that. It's great to meet you again. And um, uh, so, yeah, creative parenting, you know, parenting in parallel to being an entrepreneur, parenting in parallel to working a, a real job. Um, I had so many so quickly. So I have a 12, 14, 15, 16, 19, and the twins are 22. So I have four teenagers at home, three in college. But in those earlier years, too, it, it, I had to um, think like a business owner. I started reading management books. Um, I started create, it's just streamlined. I created, um, stand, this sounds crazy, but standard operating procedures for like the laundry flow. Um, I engaged my kids to contribute from the time they were, you know, three years old, even if that was just chopping carrots with Montessori has great tools for kids that young to contribute. Um, you know, just, I just was out of the box, um, because it was crazy. And I realized that so much of what I was doing could help people whether they had one kid or two or three or whatever. Um, and it's just streamlining thing. It was, a, it, it was a parallel of strategy and hands off, you know, I couldn't obsess and worry about every thing. And so I learned to really be chill, not helicopter parent, not overanalyze. Um, you know, I, I can't, I'm allowing her to grow up on her own and experience things. I'm still supporting and loving, but, um, and I've had to just have that balanced approach. You know, my, my four kids and I really had a team meeting, family meeting um, two weeks ago, because as, as this is like happening rapid fire, I realized that um, I've let go a lot of that delegating. And so we sat down and I said, I need one kid to take ownership of the entire kitchen every dish, every everything. Like, Maddie, you are in charge. This is your room. You know, you are going to do this. Uh, and she went along with it. It took some coercing and, and you know, buy-in um, for her to do that. And, uh, you know, just I just said, like, I can't afford to hire help. We are going to help each other. And this is part of learning to grow up as responsible adults, but not in a dictating way. Um, and then other things, I've stopped trying to be all things to all people. Like I'm looking into hiring out uh, a few meals a week so that I can just not have that. Like how am I going to feed everybody and be doing all of this? So um, it's in that reach, again, for help. Not necessarily hiring, but just uh, allowing kids to be part of the process um, of owning. You know. And then no right or, you know, not criticizing them if it's not done right. You know, just allowing them to make the mistakes to wash a dish and there's food still on it. Um, okay, rewash it. It's okay. Um, so that's how I'm doing it. And I only have my kids every other week. Uh, it's shared 50-50. So I do have, like, I don't know if I didn't have that week off um, without any other inside my house support, if I could do it at this pace. Yeah, thanks, James. Yeah, thanks, Jess. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really good question because I think this is the most common theme with uh, <clears throat> obviously anyone with kids, but uh, when, when you want to do something entrepreneurial or step out of your nine, nine to five, like I'm too busy, I'm too tired is the biggest one that always comes up and we are too tired, right? <laughs> Exhausted. But I, I think there's certainly ways for me, uh, I mean, I, I feel lucky as well because I have like such dedicated time with my daughter and then 50% uh, of the time is not with Cali so I can try to be really efficient in like my my entrepreneurial time which is my time and then I'm full on with Cali but I for me I really really take out any kind of uh, Netflix until like after a certain time at night I, I just use it to kind of wind down just a 
tiny bit. And I thought that was, it was just another wake up call of how many, how many times are we spending so much time towards just sitting back in entertainment or switching off and unwinding. Um, and if you really might have something big that you want to chase or a big dream or goal or anything, then, then you've got to put the, the systems, I guess, and not a, not a attractive word, but the systems to optimize your time a little bit better and, and time box or wh whatever it is for you in many, many different ways. Well, thanks so much for coming and we'll talk soon. Thank you, guys. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks, thanks everyone. Yes. Absolutely. Have a good weekend. Bye. Bye.